liturgy of the palms begins on page 270 in the Book of Common Prayer or on the first page of your book of service. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it, and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing, untying the colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father, David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with his people. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. And we continue with our liturgy uh, with hymn number 154. All glory, laud, and honor. <laughs>
technical detail I need to tend to at this end. There we go. And we continue with our liturgy on page 272 in the Book of Common Prayer. If you're following along in your printed order of service, we are about halfway down page two. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your son, our savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the lessons. Our first reading for today is from Isaiah chapter 50 verses 4 to 9a. The Sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. The Sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. I offer my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Because the Sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore have I set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring charges against me? Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the Sovereign Lord who helps me. Who will condemn me? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Our psalm for today is Psalm 31 on page 623, verses 9 through 16. We will read it together. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighting. My strength fails me because of affliction. My bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot, for I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and save those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness, save me. Our second reading for today is Philippians chapter two, verses five through 11. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We continue with hymn 158, Ah, Holy Jesus, How Hast Thou Offended?
The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, for there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at a table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was this ointment wasted in this way? This ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me, for you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and the man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the 12. And when they had taken their places and were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, 
and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to them, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. He said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He Abba, said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And one more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran away naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all of the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands. And in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power, and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, 
rough That's rough 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 rough. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again, he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon it was, as it was morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priest accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels, who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to the custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was the jealous that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, king of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him out of the purple cloak and put his clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. 
Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabbathani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now, when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since, since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. What a day. We begin with a triumphal entry and we end in these readings with the death of our Lord. One of the things that's missing in this telling is the context for all of what's taking place. For instance, we know that this is during the Passover and the city of Jerusalem, which typically was populated by roughly 50,000 people would swell to over 200,000 people. And because there were so many Jews in the city at that time, it was somewhat natural for the political power of Rome to want to uh, flex some political muscle. So Jesus is entering Jerusalem from the east side of town and on the west comes the Imperial army with horses and banners and soldiers and armor and all manner of display of might. On the one hand, on the one side, earthly power, and on the other, the power of heaven. And these two worlds seem to just kind of keep their respective distance. But if we listen closely to the cries of the crowd saying, Hosanna, we might be helped to know that that word means save us. So in the face of imperial might, the Jews are saying to Jesus, save us. And as they wave palm branches and fronds, themselves a symbol of freedom and independence, the message is clear and the gauntlet has indeed been thrown. And the two worlds come to collide when Ju Judas decides to betray Jesus. Here, one who was a follower and a friend in a spiritual way, gave way to and yielded to the human temptation for greed. And on the basis of that, betrayed his Lord. So on this day, we have two differing worldviews, if you will. 
one spiritual, one physical, and they do come to a head, as we know, and it costs Jesus his life. And what does this mean for us? Who begins this story with a kind of a high and with all kinds of praise and jubilation and music and shouting and feasting and ends in despair and devastation. It's tough to hold in tension those conflicting emotions and experiences. And yet our lives are like that from one day to the next, perhaps not full of angst each and every day, but we do simultaneously sometimes, for instance, celebrate the birth of a child into a family who within a matter of days or weeks says farewell by virtue of the death of another member of the family. In all kinds of ways, our lives hold in those tensions, the good, the bad, the hopeful, the despairing, the anticipated, the dreaded. And because in this particular week and on this particular day in the life of Christ, those two types of experiences and components of life do in fact come to a head. They offer for us a way of proceeding when our own lives seem dark, when our own days seem to be shrouded by difficulty and pain and suffering. Because even though the human element took charge, ended up resulting in the death of Jesus, God is not done. God is never done. In fact, if I have any kind of um, distilled theology, it is that God always has the last word. We don't honor or celebrate that today. We wait for next week for that. But on this day and on this occasion, we are reminded of the fullness and breadth of the human experience. The range of emotions from high to low, up and down, spinning around, trying to make sense of all that is chaotic in our lives and in our world. Right now, as we enter into Holy Week, our own world looks a bit tumultuous. We have on the one hand, the joy and anticipation of a vaccine and um, perhaps an end to the restrictions and changes imposed by the coronavirus. And on the other hand, we don't know what the new normal will look like. There is both hope and there is fear. We continue to live in a world that is just full of violence, whether it's by a human hand in domestic situations or whether it's on the streets with guns or in a crowded space or grocery store. The world is full of difficult times, places, and people. And yet, because we are followers of the risen Lord, we know that even in the midst of darkness and despair, hope and joy sustain us. They are the light that leads us out of dark places. And because we have that promise that God made to us, little bookend here, in the lesson we just heard, uh, it says that the temple curtain was torn in two. We've been reading, this has been the gospel of Mark. Mark begins with Jesus's baptism when the, when the clouds above him are torn open and the voice of God claims him. In the Gospel of Mark, that verb to tear only occurs in two places, in the beginning at his baptism and at the end at his death. That holds for us the reality that is of God's making, that not only is Jesus claimed, but so are we. And that even in death, there is a reuniting with the forces of good beyond our experiences. And it is those forces to which we look and we pin our hope because it is there that we find God in the midst of everything else. This week will be full of difficulty. 
in the Christian story. We hear again the passion through different gospels. We sing hymns that draw us into the horror of that time and that experience, not just for Jesus, but for his followers and for the world. But the hope is ours. And I offer that to you to take with you through this week, that when things seem despairing, God's hope, God's promise, God's love, and God's power will reunite all things and work for good according to his purpose. On that, I can rest on this day and encourage you to do the same. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people, which I believe are form one, found in your order of service on page four or in the Book of Common Prayer on page 383. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, Ian, and Laura, our bishops, for Nigerian bishops, John and Marcus, for Anne, our rector, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this town of South Windsor, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those afflicted with the coronavirus, including Allison, Joanna, Morgan, and Becca, their families and communities, for frontline workers and essential employees, for healthcare workers and professionals, and especially Tara, Robin, Paul, Mark, Adrian, Cindy, Kim, Sharice, Gina, Jen, Lorraine, Kyle, Brian, Carrie, Michael, Megan, Amanda, Saud, Brian, Melanie, Laura, Ken, Sharon, Dave, Austin, Tim, Franny, Ryan, and Tammy, and for their families. For nursing homes, staff, and residents, for all people and communities impacted by efforts to slow the spread of this disease. For these and all in need of God's comfort and peace, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For the Birdsall family, Elsie Ergo, Tim B, Brett, Carrie, and Valerie, as well as those committed to our ongoing prayers. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, including our families, friends, and neighbors, for the concerns and organizations supported by St. Peter's Through Mission, especially Africa Education Partnership. For members of our armed forces serving at home and abroad and for their families, especially Kenneth Raley Jr., Kevin Merrill, Jason Sara, Jason Dorval, and Ryan Waite, and for victims of natural disasters and human violence throughout the world, especially those who have been victims of gun violence in recent days in Boulder, Stockton, Indianapolis, Dallas, Houston, Philadelphia, and Atlanta. For persons and communities impacted by centuries of anti-Black bias, and for others seeking to undo the harm of racism. For groups to whom we extend hospitality through the use of our building, especially our Girl Scout Daisy Troop. For others, we lift up in prayer, either silently or aloud. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of this life, for the ministry of the Finance Commission, for parish members, the Roulier, Sparks, and Stimson families, for Janet Sparks and Zach Dixon, who are celebrating birthdays, and Sheila and Peter Dewberry, who are celebrating an anniversary this week. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the repose of the souls of the more than 548,000 people in the United States, 
and the 2.7 million people worldwide whose lives have been lost as a result of the coronavirus, and for all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the, the communion of St. Peter and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in all our life. To Christ our God. Be, O Lord, our God. Almighty God, you have made us in your image and call us to share in the renewal of this world. Inspire us to seek and serve Christ in all persons that the proclamation of your good news in our worship, in our words, and in our work may lead us into the fullness of your love. Through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 435, at the name of Jesus, verses 1, 5, and 6. Please join me in reciting the Lord's Prayer, page 364 in the prayer book. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And join me in reciting, Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in my heart in the fullness of your strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in right pathways. Conform my life and actions to the impact of your holiness and in the power of your gracious might, rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom. 
who with the triune God lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Now go out into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Tend the sick. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of God's Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to thank uh, Tim, as usual, for his um, gifts at the keyboard for, uh, and also for Linnea and Danielle Bennett for being here to read with us. And we have a mystery guest in the back of the room who was here doing something else at the church and we're glad to have his presence as well. Lots coming up this Holy Week, Wednesday evening, Tenebrae at seven o'clock, Maundy Thursday, an opportunity to commemorate that occasion at home among your family or around your own table. Friday, Good Friday service at 7 p.m. Weather permitting, Easter morning at eight o'clock by the Outdoor Cross and here in a pre-recorded service on Facebook at 10. Lots and lots. We hope it's a good week for you. Our prayers and blessings for all that you may encounter as you go forth in this holy time. Have a great day. <laughs>